Hi everybody, thanks so much for joining me today for this painting tutorial. I'm gonna be showing you step-by-step -step how to paint some dragonflies today on a 16 by 20 primed stretch canvas. I used one coat of white acrylic gesso just to prep the canvas so that it takes the paint better and smoother. And it also helps to hold the color so it won't dull, dull or fade after time. And I'm just gonna go over the colors with you right now. I've got ultramarine blue, turquoise, luminous rose, phthalo blue, and titanium white. Now this is just to create the background, and of course we'll be adding some more colors later on as we add our dragonflies to this painting. So if you guys are ready, let's begin. I'm gonna be using a three inch round chalk paintbrush for this as well. I'm gonna get it a little bit wet, and this is just a really nice brush I like to use for creating backgrounds and skies. And first I'm gonna just add a little bit of water to the canvas. This will also help the paint blend on a lot more smoothly onto this canvas. You definitely don't want it dripping, you just want to have it a little bit damp. So I'm going to start with a little bit of white, a little bit of phthalo blue, and for no specific reason at all. I'm just going to randomly do this. Just start twisting my brush around in circles. Now, if you don't have this brush, don't worry at all. You can use any large blending brush that you already have. take a little bit more of my phthalo blue and come in lightly over the top. So what I'm trying to create here is just a blurry sort of background of whatever these dragonflies are around. Okay, I'm going to come in with my next color now and I'm going to take turquoise without washing my brush off. And I think this time I'll come right down here and start to overlap. So see how it starts to blend in nicely to that phthalo blue. I'm gonna take some of my ultramarine blue now and I'll start adding it right in here. I'm still doing that same technique creating those small puffy circles. I'll switch over to one of my large mop blending brushes. It's nice and soft. And I'll be taking some of my magenta or luminous rose. So yeah, if you don't have magenta or luminous rose, you can also just use any deep dark pink that you might have or even purple will look pretty too. So I'm gonna start right up here in the far left corner and I'm gonna blend it right into the tur turquoise and we'll see what pretty colors we can make by doing that. It gives it sort of a pretty smoky tone. Go ahead and pick up some more. I'm going to start overlapping. Now you can do this if your paint is drying in between, um, but it will work a little bit better if your paint is still wet underneath. So if you're working wet on wet, You'll get all those um, different tones happening, which is really pretty. I'm going to come in here and add some of this rose. So it's going to make a really pretty violet.
a little bit extra white this time. So if we have a, a nice, um, rich, colorful background like this, or, or just something a little bit dark, it's gonna really help the detail on our dragonfly stand out because they're very light in color, right? And very delicate. So if you're gonna keep that in mind when you're creating your background, you can do any background you want, but just so you guys know, if you're gonna choose a really light, light background, it's gonna compete too much with your dragonfly wings and you're not gonna really see them very much. It's gonna be a little bit tougher to get um, that contrast happening. So I'm going to pick up a little bit of white and I still have lots of paint in my brush. A little bit more turquoise and white now. So I'm just going to keep, without taking my brush off the canvas, I'm just twirling my way around, picking up colors along the way, and letting them just all kind of marble together and blend. I'm going to just take a little bit of water now, just to loosen up some of that paint on my brush and be able to get down, down in here the bottom of the canvas. It's a little bit tricky sometimes, depending on what type of easel you have. Mine's kind of tucked in there. And go over this a little bit more. It's a little bit too light. I think I'd have to I'm switch over to another brush now. I've got lots of these on hand just in case I need, I need to, so it's kind of a good idea. To do that. So I've got a little bit of phthalo, a little bit of white and turquoise. I just want to darken this area up a little bit. Okay, so I'm going to dry this off now and see how it looks because it's going to definitely dry a little bit darker. Okay, so I think this looks really pretty. I'm liking all these colors. There's a couple spots here where I, I can still see the canvas. So I need to cover that up with some more paint. And I'll just take a little, just any of the first brush I chose. It, it's not really uh, important which one. So I'm just going to take this and just come in there and fill that up. Take my cobalt or ultramarine blue and just kind of come in here just along the edge to fill that in. And then right along the bottom too. It's a lot easier and smarter to do this while you still have all these colors wet on your palette rather than waiting till later to come back and do that. And then you're gonna to have to try and match everything up and pour all that paint out again. And I've still got so much paint here, I'll be using this for another painting, I'm sure. Can't put it back in the tube now. Now what I'd like to do is just, I'm going to continue to use this brush and just take a little bit of water, white, and whatever's left in my brush. So I've got some of these colors here. I'm just going to twist and roll my brush around. And what this is doing is going to make it look like there's some light peeking through. I mean, this could be, this background could actually be the sky and a magical, 
magical looking sky with clouds that um, the butterflies are sort of looking up towards. And I still want it to look blurry, so I'm going to just dry brush, kind of smush and blend my paint around, pushing gently with a brush. It always sounds a lot louder through the videos. It sounds like I'm wrecking my brush, but I promise you it's very, very gentle. So you can add as many of these little veins or whatever you want to call them, little wiggle wiggles and squiggles for your clouds as you want. But I'm pretty excited to get started on my dragonfly, so I'm going to move this along. Just add a little bit of pink in here before I begin. We don't want it too, too busy. Well, I don't want mine to be too busy because I want the focus to be on the dragonflies, but it's always nice to have a little bit of light somewhere in the background. And we can always come back in a little bit later and be careful around the dragonflies if we want to add some more to the background. This is a large canvas and there's definitely lots of room to play around. All right, guys, so the brush I'm going to be using for the dragonflies will be a filbert brush to begin. We're going to work on the wings first and then we'll add the, bo the body after because the body kind of will be in front and the, the wings will be kind of tucked in on the side. So you can do it either way, but that's just how I'm going to approach it today. today. That's what makes sense to me and that's how I would approach it. Now, I don't want to accidentally make my wings too big, so I'm going to choose a smaller brush for this size of canvas just so that I'm on the safe side. This is a number eight filbert. So I think this will be a good choice. And I'm gonna begin by taking a little bit of white, a little water on my brush. I wanna do this very delicately first. The placement, I think we'll have them kind of in the middle here as a focal point. And we'll do a line like that and then we'll do a line like that okay so just two lines like that everybody can do that that's not so hard then we'll make a little bit scooped up so from here scoop and then join those we'll do just a little Sort of a squiggle in here and then we'll do the same thing make the ends of the wing rounded I'm going to take a little bit more white. And then we can come in.
You can play around with this, see, with the, when you have watered down paint. And we can add a few little lines. We can also push off and take some of it off if you feel like you've added too much. So keeping your paint nice and thin like that will be a lot easier to work with. Now you can use so many different brushes to create little lines and patterns. Um, this is working for me so far. Just little lines like this. They're so small that we're not really going to see them. So I'm not going to worry too, too much about it. Not at this point anyways. I just want to focus on uh, the shape and the placement of my wings. I'm going to go right back, load my brush up again, water, a little bit of white, and we'll come down. We'll leave a little space, so about that much of a space. And we're just going to go almost, almost a slight curve down like that. This wing is going to come up a little bit higher than this one. So we'll make it either you can go back and make this one a little bit longer or this one a little bit shorter. Now this, the shape of this one is going to be more like a rounded triangle. And then we can bring it up here. Add whatever kind of design that you want. So I'm going to take that off where I brought it down a little bit too low. Very little paint. So there are our first set of wings. And then you can come in and start adding more white where you want to. You can do little dabs. So the next step I'm going to show you is creating some shadows, some a uh, little bit of contrast on the wings. And for that, I'm going to be taking a little bit of my black. I'm going to take a little liner brush. This is a number 10 liner brush. And I'm going to make a sort of a dark gray. I'm going to water it down. Remember, we want these details to be very delicate, so it's easier to come back in with a darker color and to take it off if we add too much and make it look too dark. Okay, so a little bit on the tip of my brush. And I'm going to just start to come inside.
and add a little bit of shadow and contrast here, very delicately. And then a little bit more of the black to outline. So I'm bringing it down a little bit and then going up. Come back in with a little bit more white. I'm going to choose some areas here. To add a little bit more details to. I'll do the same thing on the top and then I'm actually going to be showing you guys a really neat brush that you can use for creating some patterns. So the neat brush that I have is this one. It's an even tail wisp fan brush. Um, so what you can do with this brush that's really cool is that you can, whatever color you want to use, in this case, I'm going to be using a little bit of a white, a little watered down white, and you can get an instant pattern without having to take your time to do each one singularly. So you want it to do uh, equal parts water and paint. So I'll just add a little bit more water. And I'm going to come from the bottom. See? Line it up, pull, wiggle, and go up. And then you get a really nice uniform pattern like that. I'll do the same thing on the top. And you can use this brush for butterflies, moths. I've used this to paint um, patterns on animals' fur as well, and especially like um, elephants, because they have a lot of thin, detailed lines like this. Okay, so I'm going to move on to the body. I hope I still have, I think I still got some of my iridescent paint. I'm going to use a little bit of that if I, if I can find it. Um, I don't want to look for it now. I want to continue painting. But if I don't have it, that's just an idea for you guys to do a final little uh, magical touch to your dragonfly wings. Is just do a little light coat of um, 
iridescent pearl or um, even like a little bit of silver for your wallet. Whatever your choice is, whatever you like. I would, I like the iridescent that has like a bit of a shimmer of all colors when the light hits it. It's sort of um, light, how would you call it? Shifting, color shifting. So let's work on the body now. And I'm going to begin with yellow ochre. So I've got my number eight filbert brush. I'm just gonna get a little bit on the tip of my brush like this. And I'll start with the head that comes up here. So we'll just do a little round head like that. And then it's gonna get narrower. And then of course they have really long bodies that come down to about there. I'm going to take a little bit of white and mix it in with my yellow ochre. And I'm going to do a little line over the top. up a little bit more white. This will help to make highlights and also make it look shiny. So I'm going to be applying little kind of dots like this in between, but you can make any pattern that you want. Feel very free with um, your version of this and your dragonfly, or you can follow along. And then I'm going to be pulling them out a little bit longer and lower. Okay, I'm going to take a little bit more of my white lightly and gently come inside. And I'm going to switch over to one of my liner brushes to do the fine black details on the body. So I've got my number two liner. It's sort of a, a thicker liner than uh, the other one I was using. And I'm just going to scoop into my black without getting it wet first. So I'm going to do a little outline. Come inside. Do two little circles like that. Just going to start outlining the body, and then each time I do a little outline here, I'm going to just add a few little faint lines that go up towards the wing like this. I'm going to continue down the body outlining each of these little circles. And then as we get towards here, we're going to kind of push, making it a little bit wider. and then narrower and narrower as we go down.
always find one side easier than the other to do. Just work out these shapes a little bit better, making sure I have it nice and nice and bright where I want it to be. And back to the black, just so I can add some little dabs in here. Bring a few little black lines in here on the side. I'm going to come in though with a little bit more white now. And just make the wings stand out a little bit more. Where I need them to. A little bit more white inside here. So this one's going to be overlapping this one a little bit, but I'm going to do the wings first. I'm going to start with the bottom set of wings. round that out a little bit more. And there's one right over so that it meets right about here. And then bring it down slightly lower, like that one. Give a little bit of a pattern. Work off some of this paint on this side. There's just so many different ways you could approach the wings, so many different brushes you could use. I hope today that I've given you guys some more ideas and helped you out. So I know this has been, this is a popular request I've been getting, so I thought it was time to do it. This one's going to come just past here and up, around. And then the other side.
So I'm going to come in with my little lighter brush and do those light details with the black and the white. I'm going to pick up just a little bit more of the black there. a little bit darker. Bring a little scoop in there for the starting of starting stages of the pattern. And we'll move on to the other side. I'm going to just do some little, almost like little squares like that. Taking a little bit more black this time, just using the very tip of my brush. I have a little black, thicker, shorter, but thicker line right on the end of their wings, right at the top here. Okay, and now I'm going to come in with my little wisp fan brush, get it wet again, load it up with a white, kind of wiggle. I'm just going to add a little dab here. And just create my own pattern, sometimes just a few little dots.
same way. I'm going to take my yellow ochre. Take a little bit of white this time because I know I want it to be a little bit lighter. And I'll start with the head. So this one's going to be a little bit wider than this because of the angle that it's on. We're going to see its side as well as the top. Okay, now we'll come in with a little bit of white. Start adding. Those highlights. Keep it right, or, right there at the top of the head. And then start just dabbing. And I'm going to dry this off and then come in with my black pattern and details. I'll be using my same number two brush. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead, take my black. I'll start up here by placing this eye, one eye right there, and then another little eye down below. We'll do a thin outline, a few little scoops. And we'll add those little lines, little delicate lines in there that follow from the body and then create little patterns and shadows along the way. we're going to do, because this is a bit different, the view, the angle that this is on. So we're going to do a thicker black line along the side. We're still going to see some yellow. So we're going to knot halfway. You want to bring it past your halfway mark of the body. And then over as we get to the end of the tail. We're then going to do some lines across like that. I'm going to take my wisp fan again.
So little dabs are nice too because it kind of gives it a bit of a sparkle. Maybe there's a little bit of dew on their wings. I kind of like that look, so I think I'm going to choose a few little spots here where I'm going to have a little bit of a a little bit of a twinkling sparkle. So just taking that white and adding a few little dabs here. A few little dabs here and there. And we'll just come inside here again. And I want to bring in a little bit of light down here as well. So I'm going to be using my filbert brush again and working on that first. So I'm going to take a little bit of my white again. And just sort of create some soft rays back here. Little indication of some light. I'm going to continue doing this, but I want to dry this off first to make sure that I'm not picking up because that's still pretty wet. So I'll be using this size and it's a number 11. I'll take a little bit of water on my brush just to loosen up the bristles so that I can get a thin transparent sun ray effect. And I think right in here. Just gonna start. Building some light. light rays are hitting, we'll probably see a little something in here. Soften that with my finger. I'm going to take white on the tip of my brush. Just gonna stumble softly around here. Okay, so I like the way that looks. I'm gonna take my little liner brush here and add just another little bit of peaks on my on these clouds. Them look small, 
far away. And I still got some of my luminous rose, so I'm going to take some of that with my white. And just accent some of these clouds here where the light will be getting some light from those rays. And then soften with your finger. Take a little bit of this light pink and just start dusting over a few areas on the wings because I don't have any iridescent paint. So I want to create that sort of rainbow effect on the wings by taking pastel colors. Okay, so along with, I've got my neon yellow here with some white. I'm going to add a little bit right here and there, making these wings look sort of shimmery. Then I'll take some of my pink. You can just soften with your finger. So just subtle little highlights like that look really pretty. Take a little bit of my neon pink and a little something in here just to add a little bit more color I'm going to tint them with or tint my white with a little bit of pink Take my little bit of neon yellow and white and come right from here So I want to thank you guys so much for joining me today. This was a lot of fun to paint. Thank you so much for requesting this on Patreon. 
and I look forward to sharing my next video and tutorial with you all. So happy painting, have a wonderful day, and I'll see you soon. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel, give this video a like, and comment below if you enjoyed watching this one. Bye, everybody.